there's really a couple of things here that, that are at play. We have obviously property law, criminal law, and we got some constitutional issues all in, all involved in this at the same time. Um, none of which actually supersedes the other in some regards. So from a standpoint of criminal, there's criminal trespass and there's the civil trespass, and they are slightly different. Uh, from a standpoint of the sheriff's office, obviously we're not in the position of telling everybody where their property lines are at. We expect owners to know that. Our policy is that they possess a certified DP uh, survey that's, that says, you know, this is our property lines, this is where it's at, and that they be able to tell us where the lines are at. That's the way we're going to try and adopt it. Uh, the question of GPS came up. I know we had that, we've had that discussion before, and I think maybe I should probably provide some context. What we meant was that we are not going to try and quibble over a foot one way or the other to the east or the west, right? So if somebody comes up and says, hey, uh, I want you to move one, one foot, that, you know, that's, that's not reasonable, and we're, we're not going to try and get into delineating that. If it's what we would say clearly uh, inside what the survey possesses that shows that it's on private property, that becomes an issue where we can say, okay, there is a, a GPS, you know, give or take a minus of three feet, that this is probable that the uh, trespassing has occurred from that standpoint. So all that's a long way of saying yes, it is the responsibility of the property owner to know where their property lines are at. So anything five acres or less with a residence is presumed to be trespassing and is not required, not required by Florida law to be signed. If you put signs up under the trespassing statute, there are very specific ways that has to be done. However, that is not a requirement under Florida law. But for us, we, we have to know where the property lines are out. I'm going to refrain from saying what my opinion is in regard to whether or not a sign is appropriate. What I would say is it, it absolutely for us to make a criminal arrest for trespassing, we have to know where the property line's at. Now, the, the benefit of the doubt, I guess you would say from the standpoint of that if they're possessing that survey, uh, is when the owner tells us that we're going to have to, they're going to have to be sure that what they're saying is accurate. Now, how they determine they're accurate, that's that really the onus is on them from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have this situation where even things that we thought were somewhat clear in regard to say what the mean high tide water line, the term wet sand, it is it, it can be a complex issue as you are, are well aware, particularly when it's different west of topsail as opposed to east of topsail, right? But we've filled it, in, as you all have, I'm sure, many, many emails and phone calls concerning uh, this issue. A great example was, you know, we would have people going, well, what's the difference between surf and tide? What's the difference between wind blown? And the, I mean, some of these people are, are, are unreasonable in the regards of how to, how to make a decision on this stuff. What we've tried to say at the waterline is this, what we know under Florida law that is reasonable for us to attempt to do is in what is essentially the wet sand or the tide line. We, we know that. We feel confident from that standpoint. That's my rule. I'm going to stand by that because I think that's fair. In the east and west, and I know that's primarily, uh, you know, where our, where our issue comes in, uh, the, you know, that's going to fall on the owner. They need to know where it's at. So, uh, yeah, obviously, we, we work very closely with the state attorney's office trying to ascertain uh, what would be their position from a standpoint of prosecution, uh, whether or not, you know, ultimately, as you well know, but for the benefit of the rest of the board, to make a decision whether or not an arrest is made really boils down on a, to a couple of issues, not the least of which whether or not that we know that case can or cannot go forward. So, for instance, if the state's attorney says we believe this matter is in dispute and it's in litigation and we think there's some issues, that would negate my ability to make criminal arrest, in my opinion. Uh, because then it would become an issue of uh, you, you wouldn't make an arrest where you know there's not going to be a successful prosecution. It doesn't make sense. We're waiting there still finish that review. I, I realize it is it is the last week. We are in we are in concert you know in in com constant communication. Um, I don't 100 percent know the answer to that, but I anticipate knowing by the end of this week. And we will push that information out as quickly as possible. But it but as you well as of course as you're aware, regardless of what happens, and from that regard. Nothing about this changes the individual property owner's right to enforce civil trespass. It does, however, change the, uh, the liability mechanism from that standpoint. It is extremely difficult for a deputy sheriff to walk down the beach and make an ass ascertain whether or not this is somebody's private property based on these property lines. I mean, we're going to do our best to mediate this and to you know, provide customer service and be reasonable, but I know you will find this shocking, but there's unreasonable people.
and there, there are people that you, you, you cannot communicate with at some level. And so, you know, we're, we're going to do our best, but it, it is, it does, it's very difficult without knowing where those property lines are at. We're ultimately going to defer to what that survey says to the best of our ability to ascertain it. So if you're asking me what makes it easier to see, I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do to make it easier to see. Whether or not that's palatable to this board and whether that's palatable to the public is, are two separate issues. I unfortunately do not have the leeway to make a decision. Uh, I, let me correct myself on that. I am not going to willfully choose not to enforce the law, right? I just am not going to do that. It's a moral, from my standpoint, it's a moral imperative. No, and I, I don't, I don't, I want to be clear. I know that you're not asking me, but what I'm going to try and do the best of my ability and with the, with my, our deputy's ability is to try and determine where these properties are line, lines are at. And I see a lot of conversation standing on the beach. I think we will use a myriad of things. I think GPS is one option to try and assist with it. Um, but I, I don't want to mislead you. If we get down to a space of this far, you know, we're not going to move people or we're not going to arrest people over three and four feet. That's just, it's not practical and I, quite frankly, I don't think it's the right thing to do. If you put signs out there, let's use that for example, um, you know, whether or not you leave the signs or whether they stay, stay every night, I mean, that, that, that's a whole separate set of issues, right? Here's what we say, they have to be right. If you put them out there and you're moving them every day, that's not my responsibility to determine, you know, to tell you how to put your stakes up. You, you've got to do that. So, the, I mean, again, no, nothing about this relieves the property owner's responsibility to determine where their line's at. Nothing about any decision you make, from notwithstanding what type of signs you use, relieves the property owner of their responsibility and their right to say where their property line is at. Obviously, from, our, from a sheriff's office standpoint, if, you, if this wasn't the beach, right, if that wasn't the discussion, which it is, and I understand that, you know, we're, we would tell you anything that makes something clear, obviously, the better it is, right? However, notwithstanding, there are other issues here for you to consider. What we're saying to you is we're going to work with you and the public, both the beachgoers and the individual property owners, to try and use as much reasonable judgment, as much um, customer service as, as possible to diffuse these situations. We have about 33, I think there are 33 beach accesses that roughly are going to allow people to stand in the surf line, some version of that as, they, as it's currently written. Um, that's gonna cause some confusion. So obviously we're, we understand that and we're, we're gonna do what we can to resolve it. We are not going to be looking to go up and down the beach to try and remove people from property. These, these things must be complaint driven. So you know the owner or the owner's registered agent uh, must be the one to make a decision or to file a complaint. We're simply not going to do that. It wouldn't make sense otherwise, and I think it's contrary to the law from that standpoint. But we have heard that so people maybe that don't understand, they think that we're you know we're going to go down and say, hey, do you live on this piece of property? We're going to move you. That's not the case. So it must be driven. It's not proactive. It is response driven. Second, because one of the things that's being said is the law abolishes customer use. That is not what the law does. It changes the mechanism, and I know you know that, but for the sake of uh, continuity that we know it as well too, it abolishes the process or the Walton County's ordinance and then you have a process that you're moving forward. I, I, think, that's, I think that's the crux of it, you know, is that from a policy board's uh, position, customer use still applies. And y'all are working through the, uh, or as, uh, as a property rights issue. From a criminal issue, a criminal uh, trespass, criminal law issue, I'm, I'm bound by what is in place now. And so even again with the water, that's been a little bit, I, I, not to bore you, but if you had, have you have seen the number of uh, uh, calls, complaints with every manner of deviation humanly possible asking, will you arrest for this, will you arrest for that, will you arrest for this, will you arrest for that. Um, you know, we have to be reasonable to the best of our ability. And so what we have said uh, pretty uniformly to the people that are now continuing the press for an arrest, uh, you know, we, we have, just to be clear, we have people that say, listen, I'm going to stake my four corners of my property and you will go out around the water because of Florida, you know, they were getting into submerged lands and some of that stuff. We're just not going to do that. We, we think the, the reasonable and fair and within my ability to set this standard is that wet sand. And wet sand, again, is where the surf is continually breaking during the day. Not where it was wet from rainfall at the night, not the highest point of tide that hadn't dried out because it's an hour in the morning, but where the water is breaking. And that changes through the day. But I think the public can look at that. They, as you said, Commissioner, 
they have to be able to reasonably understand the rules that are being given to them. So I, I, don't know, I don't know another way to do it than that at this point. EP survey that they have the certified where it starts at a certain area that they can put a marker and come down. That's not a permanent fixed thing, right? It's not at the it's not at the seaward side. It is at the uh, at the uh, the toe of the dune side. So if if they pull, for instance, their property line is relatively straight. Let's assume that it is going north and south. That's that was commissioner. That was kind of my point about not worrying about are you standing right here? Or are you standing right there? But if you're 25 feet away from the edge that that's pretty reasonable we can or you know that that makes sense that they would be on that side um, that is not going to satisfy I, I, I realize that that's going to be uns, unsatisfactory to a lot of folks is it reasonable to believe do we have evidence to believe that the state of Florida says this can result in a successful prosecution that really is what it, part of this is going to boil down to so if I have if I am informed or I am told in such a manner that they would believe it would be uh, difficult or not result in a successful process, prosecution, uh, then I don't think that I can, in good conscience, advocate for a criminal arrest. Now, that doesn't mean we still wouldn't go down there. We still wouldn't try and mediate this. This is not changing the property owner's rights, what they may or may not have in that regard. It just means that the sheriff's office is not going to take someone to jail for that, right? So we're waiting to get that final, uh, ask, you know, to ascertain that. I'll tell you, our attorneys have looked at it backwards and forwards. Uh, we have an opinion at this point, but we want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, but I have to, today I have to go with what I know absent that. Now, there is a pretty, a pretty strong argument to be made that while this is in, in, when the policy board for the county says that they believe something is in effect, and I realize that's property law, right? And if the state was to say, and it's obviously pending a, uh, or will be pending a, a lawsuit, that does change the dynamics of it because it's very difficult when the policy board says, we believe this is in place, that, that sends a message to the public that it is open, right? And so when you start making criminal arrest, you know, intent is one of those things we consider. Are you willfully and intentionally trying to do this? It does, it does pay a factor in this type of a situation. So we will decide that based on what the final meeting with the state attorney's office tells us, you know, and, and if, if, they're, if they believe that this results in successful prosecution and there is no other uh, no other avenue to resolve the issue, then we're going to do it. But I am desperately hoping that the last resort of any of this results in arrest. Because then, uh, unfortunately, what happens is the sheriff's office becomes the story and a deputy sheriff who's out there simply trying to maintain the peace is now becoming a land surveyor and setting in a flash point between multiple policy boards. It's not a, not a conducive <laughs> position for us to be in. But that's our duty and we're going to do it to the best of our ability to do it. Um, and, and I hope to have a, a final statement on this from that standpoint with the, with the state sometime this week.